Hello and welcome to the special broadcast on the minutes of the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting that took place earlier this month on February 8th. Uh, well, the uh, key highlights of the meeting are more or less uh, predictable. We see the three RBI members and one external member, Shashank Kabide, largely worried about core inflation persisting above the 6% mark. Uh, Mr. The Governor Sh Shakti Kanta Das is very clearly pointing out that the fall in inflation that we saw in November and more importantly in December was largely because of vegetables, which could be passing and uh, the one that persists, core inflation is sticky. Uh, Rajiv Ranjan, the other RBI member, says intermittent inflation is lower, but steady inflation, which is core inflation, remains high and therefore to bring it back to the MPC's given target, uh, they will have to persist with the rate hike. That's how they support the rate hike. Uh, the two of them who have voted against the rate hike and have asked for a change in the policy stance, uh, Dr. Ashima Goel and Dr. Jayant Verma, point out that uh, inflation has been coming down. In fact, is lower than what the in, uh, RBI forecast. Uh, they are at pains to point out that if there is over uh, front loading of rate hikes, as Ashima Goyal call, uh, calls it, the chances are that growth, which is still incipient, may be hurt. Dr. Verma ba basically saying that he has already made his comment in the previous policy statement, uh, uh, merely states that RBI erred on the side of slowly raising rates when inflation was rising. Now it is probably erring on the side of raising rates too much and hurting growth. That's the sum and substance, but we have the external members themselves joining us. So let us hear it from them. Joining me now are uh, Dr. Jayant Verma, Dr. Shashanka Bide and Dr. Ashima Goel. Uh, gentlemen and uh, Ashima, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, well, uh, uh, Ashima, if I can start with you, you argue very cogently, uh, uh, emphatically, that inflation has been coming down. But uh, the latest reading uh, wants, uh, would make you change your mind. It's uh, indicating otherwise. I argued uh, that uh, some parts of core inflation are coming down, but I said that the headline inflation that decreased was due to transient, could be transient, uh, volatile vegetable prices. Yeah, so yes. I agree with the Rajiv Ranjan that okay. I call it transient. Okay. You know, as monetary policy members, we have to look through transient inflation. Sure. The current spike in the rate of spike, which we have seen, is also one of those transient spikes. Okay. But over the longer term, I think that firms when they see overall uh, some international prices have softened, some input costs have softened, and as demand is softening, we've seen that in the latest import data also, they will not be able to price on past, um, costs as aggressively. Yeah? Mm. So we should, and WPI inflation has really fallen, which captures firm prices more mm. and their costs. Yeah. So those are the factors that I see decreasing inflation as well as uh, the large, that the real repo rate is positive because spreads are high, loan rates are positive and demand is very interest sensitive in India because of the large, uh, you know, young people buying goods on credit, houses, uh, housing loans being large now. So all this is a factor reducing demand and we should let this play out. This will act to damp core inflation. Okay. You don't need to keep raising rates if inflation is is high. Okay. If you already raise them, you wait and see their effects. No? Okay. Well, uh, the argument against that, uh, and this one is uh, to Dr. Verma. Uh, uh, Dr. Verma, you know, at 6.5% inflation in January, the chances are it's going to be another 64 in February as well. Uh, the MPC is way off target. Uh, it's not even within the tolerance band, way off target. Uh, would that want you to reconsider your stance? No, you see, I think uh, the way I look at it is that, you know, monetary policy cannot be fighting uh, yesterday's battles and today's battles, you know, because of the lags that are there in how monetary policy impacts the economy. Uh, you are always fighting tomorrow's battles and not today's battles. So month by month, the rate goes up, goes down. But the point is that we have done a significant amount of tightening uh, 
uh, over the last uh, you know uh, eight nine months, and uh, that has pushed the policy rate to a point where it is having an impact on the economy. It is destroying demand, and that demand destruction will feed through uh, into uh, in, into a moderation of inflation. That's going to happen. And the uh, you know when you take that forward-looking perspective, then what you're really looking at is that we have done a great deal of uh, tightening. That tightening is beginning to have an impact on the economy, and more will happen in the months ahead. And when you take that forward uh, perspective, then what you're really looking at is that the concerns are more about uh, growth than about inflation. There are a whole lot of structural factors that are driving the uh, uh, driving the inflation down. Uh, an important element is is crude. Crude has remained far below the RBI projections for many months now, and uh, those uh, those have not been uh, fed through into retail prices. In fact, even looking at Brent crude is a significant overestimate because about 25 to 30% of our crude is, is basically coming from Russia, which is probably costing us $60 a barrel. And uh, therefore, there is a huge amount of us through of the crude reduction. If the weighted average price of crude today is probably 75, and those, there is an enormous amount of pass through that can happen to retail prices in the months ahead. Because you're, you know, all those projections that we are seeing are based on 95. So there is a huge amount of pass through that is possible that has to happen in the months ahead, because the backlog of under recovery will go away, and the oil companies would be flush with funds today. They're minting money at these, uh, you know, $60 crude prices from the Urals. That passes through, and we're going to see a very substantial decline in inflation. At the same time, where growth is going to be under, uh, you know, is going to remain fragile. That is my opinion. So are you asking for a cut in excise duties? Because the uh, the so-called $60 Ural crude hasn't flowed down to the consumer level. So are you, like Ashima Goel, uh, 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 very upfront is asking for a cut in excise duties? Is that your ask, sir? No, what I'm saying is that there is a pass-through that has to happen, right? If our weighted average price of crude is far below what it was a few months ago, then the retail price must follow, right? Retail prices follow global prices of crude with a lag. Mm. They followed with a lag when the crude went up, and they will follow with a lag when crude goes down. You know, I'm not... Uh, you know, I'm not asking for anything. I'm simply saying and you're that saying it will come down. Course, in the logical course that has to happen, that crude, when crude is uh, costing us mm. so low, then our uh, pump prices cannot remain so high. There will be a pass through that will happen, and there is an accumulated pass through okay. on the negative side now. Well, actually, crude was at 121 only one year ago when the war broke out, barely for a month. It has fallen okay. thereafter, but our core inflation refuses to fall. Uh, so I'll come uh, to that point again. Uh, the, the supposed f uh, falling of uh, uh, you know, crude-related and energy-related prices is not happening in the economy. Uh, Dr. Bide, uh, to come to you, uh, what's your assessment now? On hindsight, do you think uh, that uh, it was just as well that Reserve Bank went with the rate hike? What's your, uh, you know, forecast in terms of uh, uh, forthcoming uh, inflation readings, since one of them is way higher than what Reserve Bank itself forecast? Reserve Bank cut the Q4 from 5.9 to 5.7. Now it looks set to be 6%, uh, the Q4 inflation. So anything further you would like to add? Uh, see, I think the uh, issue really is with core inflation because I guess the uh, the fluctuations that we saw in uh, November, December, and probably also now in January uh, are a few commodities I think uh, which are affect uh, which are causing this uh, large uh, changes. Uh, and therefore, the projections in terms of projections, I think what is important is that uh, the 
uh, you know, core inflation has to show moderation well below 6%. Uh, so I, th I think the, uh, you know, the projections for the year for 23, 24 are obviously below 6%, um, but I think that is also because uh, of the reduction and across the board, I think um, expected reduction in the price increases. So, so I think the, you know, January figures are also not reflecting the sharp increase in prices across the board. Uh, we see large increases, I think, in wheat uh, and, and so on. So, yes. so uh, uh, you know, I think the concern is that um, uh, it is important to see that the there is a moderation in price pressures in most of the commodities um, that we see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, cereals inflation was what I was going to toss to the other members as well. Uh, Ashima, since the uh, 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 Monetary Policy Committee met on Feb 8, uh, we actually, we know that the cereals inflation is up 16.2% year on year and about 2.5% uh, January over December. We are also, in the past few days, getting data that uh, the early uh, onset of heat will probably reduce the wheat crop. And therefore, the expected sobering of cereals prices perhaps may not happen. Uh, your thoughts uh, uh, on uh, food inflation itself? Right. I have said that uh, our uh, action has to be data-based. So if all these fears materialize and wheat prices rise, there's a heat effect. And there is government action, their sale from FCI and the expected effect of a good winter harvest does not happen. And we think that this is going to have persistent effects on our projection. Then our rates will be adjusted suitably. So our action will be data dependent. But at sure. present, the forecasts are showing that one year ahead inflation is, is, is like much less than six. And our repo rate is 6.5 so that you have a real rate of one. This is contractionary. Just remember, we have raised rates by a large amount, nominal rates, and real rates are positive 1%. Mm -hmm. And this is contractionary for demand and will work to reduce core inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the real rates if it, at 6.5 and 5.6% uh, fourth quarter, next fourth quarter inflation, the real rate still is only 90 basis points uh, positive. Uh, I, is, is there not a case, I mean, there were some RBI studies which were indicating that the real positive rate should be at least 150 basis points. I mean, there was, of course, disagreement about it. But, uh, I mean, there have been many periods in the past when positive real rate is more than 100 uh, 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 basis I points. I think were rates when growth slowed dramatically, when the real rate were incentive between 4 and 5% and a highly negative effect. I just remember that we are looking at a growth slowdown. Growth has slowed. There has been fiscal consolidation that reduces government demand, and uh, other other such uh, such and the effect of, as I said, interest elastic demand because of the real repo rate being positive. So therefore, um, there is going to be effect, some effect on inflation from all this. Okay, I have to uh, ma take a mandatory break. Back in a jiffy with more questions uh, for our experts. So uh, this is uh, an extremely interesting vote where two members have voted against both the rate hike and the stance we are back. The Monetary Policy Committee's minutes are out. And uh, as we knew before, two members have voted against the rate hike and uh, four members support the rate hike. All the three RBI members support the rate hike. External member uh, Dr. Shashank Kabide also supported the rate hike and members uh, Ashima Goel and Jayant Verma voted against it. We are speaking to the external members, Dr. Goel, Verma and uh, Dr. Bide. Uh, gentlemen and Ashima, thank you for waiting by. Uh, Dr. Verma, uh, you know, the mandate is to keep it below 6% and you're likely to uh, be violating the mandate for yet another quarter, which is the current one. Uh, and that is the primary uh, mandate of the MPC. Growth is a subsidiary mandate. Uh, will that m make you want to change your mind? You see, I, I have written in my statements that the high inflation that we have seen today uh, is the result of mistakes that were made 
in uh, you know in 2122. Okay. Now uh, uh, there is no point in uh, you know saying compensating for that by making the opposite mistakes today. You know, monetary policy cannot and should not be guilt driven. The fact that you made a mistake a year ago is not a reason for you to make an opposite mistake today. We know that nothing that we do today, raising the rate by 25 basis points in, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the uh, earlier this month, uh, would not do anything to February inflation, will not do anything to March inflation. Those numbers are there. Those numbers are not going to be changed by what we are doing now. Uh, these are things that are going back very, very long, many three, four, five quarters past. And there's nothing we can do about it today. We have to look forward. But Dr. Look, Verma, yeah, you know, looking forward as well, the Reserve Bank's forecast is 5.6% year ahead, which is barely within the tolerance band, barely within 6%. Uh, the target is 4%. So uh, does yeah. one not have to do more to get there? Yeah, the RBI forecast is based on crude at $95 a barrel, mm. right? Now, when was crude actually trading at 95 last year? You know, I, I'm, I, I, I take your point, so sir. I, 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 I take your point, I have forgotten sir. when crude traded at 95. No, I take your point, sir. It, it the is two months since China no, opened up. One minute, that. sir. So one minute. still not gone to anywhere near. Yeah, that. I agree. But uh, uh, RBI's forecast or RBI's assumption of crude was at $100 even when they were forecasting 5.7 for the current quarter. But in spite of that higher assumption they made, look at the current inflation. It's way above what they forecast. So just by sticking to that $95, we aren't necessarily proving that inflation is going to be lower than the Reserve Bank's forecast. It might well be higher as it is in the current quarter, can't it? Well, so 5.7 is assuming that pass-through from lower crude prices will not happen for the next three, four, five quarters. I mean, if that is the assumption, then true. Then you've got to raise rates a lot. Okay. If you believe that when world crude is trading at 85, when India is buying crude at 75, crude is going to cost us $95 for the foreseeable future, then yes, rates will have to go much higher. Then the rates will have to go up but, uh, significantly. Yes, there's no question about that. But I do not believe... I do not believe that it is reasonable to assume that our crude pump prices will remain at the same level three quarters from today uh, when, uh, when our crude is costing us so much less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, it's actually only crude that seems to have come down even today when generally risk assets are lower, metal prices are still high. So there is a persistence of core elsewhere as well. But I'll come back to that point. Let me ask Dr. Bide. Uh, sir, uh, you know, the fact that the current inflation is uh, the current quarter is much higher than what the Reserve Bank forecast. Uh, the Reserve Bank forecast 5.7. It now looks like we're going to end this quarter a little closer to 6. Uh, a second point, there is likelihood of higher serial inflation. So all this, is it giving you the feeling that the Reserve Bank will be forced to push up its forecasts uh, for some parts of FI24? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess the... You know... What has happened in the quarter of four is the January numbers now. And as you said, you know, what happens to the rabi harvest and so on is uh, will influence, I think, the prices uh, in the next couple of months also. But I think so the, the forecast projections for 23, 24, you know, are based on assuming a normal monsoon mm. and the you know, crude, what it is, and uh, the exchange rate and so on. Uh, so, so there, there is. I, I think it, it is important to uh, sort of uh, say that uh, uh, the trajectories of both growth and inflation uh, projections of those trajectories are subject to considerable uncertainty. I think, mm. and so no, the, at the moment, sir, for in the near term, is there an upward bias to the forecast for both these reasons that uh, uh, Jan inflation is higher, uh, the rabi crop seems to be under a bit of duress because of early and more intense heat, and let's not forget, even the U.S. inflation numbers are coming in higher than estimates, both CPI and PPI. For a combination, would you fear that there is an upward bias to the near-term readings? Uh, I mean, uh, up, upward bias or uh, the possibility of uh, 
uh, inflation rate being higher. Higher than expected. That's what I mean. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Do you think yeah. there is a fear? Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, there is certainly uh, a, uh, a risk attached to that, uh, that trajectory. And I think the, for the reasons that you mentioned mm. for food inflation, particularly, mm. I mean, there is this uh, possibility of uh, food inflation being uh, higher than I think uh, what we probably assume in mm. making that forecast for a fourth quarter. Mm. Uh, so so I, I, I think, you know, so in uh, in these in these uh, assessments, uh, you know, what is what is also assumed is that the pass through of uh, higher commodity prices that we saw earlier uh, and the higher uh, energy prices and so on uh, would that pass through would be complete and therefore the core inflation should reduce over time mm. and i think that is also assuming that you know there are no no additional exogenous shocks to this mm. uh, and therefore i think the reason to be cautious at this at this particular point is that um, uh, we need to make sure that you know the the moderation in inflation is sort of wider than what we have seen so far okay all right. Uh, I'm sorry we're out of time, but it was a pleasure speaking to all three of you, Dr. Bide, Dr. Varma and Dr. Goyal. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, uh, the, the two external members pretty firm that uh, the front loading is done with and now we may be hurting growth. It's time to pause. But uh, Dr. Bide, as he has written, still worrying that at least in the near term, there are a combination of factors that could push inflation higher. We wind up this special broadcast on the minutes of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. Keep it with CNBC TV 18. More news and updates are lined up for you.